Good morning. Oh, make sure my mic is on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Sarah, and I work in the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And I'm so excited you're joining us today because you have tuned in for a Draw With Us program. This is one of our favorite programs here because we get to explore an animal, and then we get to be creative and draw that animal. And then our favorite part at the end, <coughs> excuse me, is when you send us pictures of all your drawings. So I hope you'll stay with us, draw along with us, and let us see all all your amazing artwork. Now, that being said, we have a very special program today. It's not just any ordinary draw with us. We're actually gonna have some special guests joining us. So today we're gonna focus on birds, specifically a lorikeet. Now you may never have heard about that bird before and we're gonna put up a picture in just a moment, but we are gonna focus on lorikeets. We're gonna draw a lorikeet and we're actually gonna get a visit from one of our lorikeets. So one of our aviculturists, now that's a big word, but aviculturist is someone who works with birds. And we have a lot of birds here at the aquarium. So someone from our aviculturist team is gonna come join us and they're gonna bring with them one of our lorikeets. So not only do we get to see pictures and draw this animal, you get to meet one of our lorikeets that lives here at the aquarium. So it's gonna be a really fun program today. Now, while we're exploring, or when you wanna send your drawings, we have this number right here. So while we're exploring, if you have questions or you wanna share some observations of what you notice about the things we're looking at, go ahead and text us with this number, 562-286-1838. Now keep in mind that text and data rates do apply. And if you are one of our younger viewers, make sure you have adult permission before texting us in. But once you text us in, I have a lot of help here in the studio. So I have my friend Carrie, who's controlling all the things you see behind me. And my friend Cynthia is at the computer. And when you text us in, she'll get those texts and then she can send them in to me and we can talk about all your questions and observations. Now, if you're watching this live, so it is Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. on April 7th, you can go ahead and text us. But if you're watching after the fact and we're no longer live, we still want to hear from you, but we just ask that you use this email address just below the phone number, live at lbaop.org to contact us, and then we can respond via email. All right, explorers, are you ready to get started? All right, let's go. So I'm going to have Carrie put up a picture of a lorikeet because that may not be a bird you're familiar with. So take a look at these birds. Now we have a whole aviary. That means a whole area for lorikeets. We have just about a hundred birds here at the aquarium of these lorikeets. Now lorikeets, they are very colorful and they are birds native to Australia. Now while we're looking here, if you wanna make some observations, so you can think about those observations, you can share them with anyone you're watching with, or you can even text us in those observations. Now I want you to start thinking about if we're gonna draw these animals, what things do we need to include or think about? And you can text us and let us know what we need to include with our drawing. Cause we're gonna get started really soon here after we make a couple observations of these birds. Now, one of the big questions that we get when we look at these birds or the first thing people think of when they come to visit our lorikeet forest is, oh, all right friends, we got a message about my volume's a little low. So we're gonna adjust our sound and if it gets better, or worse, please let us know and that way we can uh, adjust more accordingly. All right, I'm gonna move the mic closer to my mouth and see if that makes a difference. And if you notice a difference, whether it got better or worse, please let us know and that way we can continue to adjust if we need to. But I, what I was saying is one of the things that people often ask us is why do we have birds or these birds specifically? Because there are a bunch of shore birds that we have here at the aquarium that live as their name implies, along the shore. Uh, so they live in wetlands, they might live even on the water. But these lorikeets, if you come and see their uh, enclosure here, which I think Carrie can put up a video. I'm gonna step back on the camera. Carrie's gonna put up a picture or a video of what their enclosure looks like, our lorikeet forest here at the aquarium. You'll notice there's a little bit of water. If you come see, they have a little bird bath. It's really pretty with a little waterfall. But they don't have a lot of water like the ocean. And that's because these birds, they do live near the ocean, but they live on an island. So they live around Australia on the islands and they live in the trees. They make their nests in the ground, but you may not see them in the water. So why do we have these birds here at the aquarium? Well, first off, they are a coastal species. So we do find them on islands. So they do depend on those habitats that are near the ocean, but also we're all connected. Oh, here we go. Here's a good picture. This is what our aviary looks like. And you can see those lorikeets flying back and forth. Uh, this was really good. This is during the holidays and we put Christmas trees for them with cranberries on them and they love to eat those cranberries and they do make a mess, but it's very cute to watch them make that mess. So these birds, they're 
lives are connected to the ocean. All of our lives, even if we're not near the ocean, are connected to the ocean. And so that is why we have the birds here. Another reason we have them is this is your chance to get super close to some of our animals here because you can walk through and when you're here, you can even feed these birds and sometimes they'll land on you. And so it's a chance to get up close and personal with our lorikeets. Pretty cool. All right, let's go back to that picture of our three lorikeets because there's different types of lorikeets. So we have three species and let's start making some observations so that we can start drawing these birds. So let's take a look at our three types of lorikeets that we have here. We've got a couple computers with different pictures so we gotta sort through everything, but Carrie is on top of it. All right, so these are our three species. So this one right here is called a green naped. And I like to think of it as kind of tiger stripe. That's how I tell this one, the green naped. And then we've got our Swainson, which I describe as sort of a sunset area on the chest. And then we have our Edwards over here that is all yellow. So as we're drawing today, think about their colors. These are super colorful birds. And think about where you see their colors and what colors do you see? But also what parts of their body do we need to make sure we include? Definitely their beak, their eye. They've kind of got this rounded head and then all of their feathers. All right, you know what? We are going to pause. So we are gonna go over to my document camera and we're gonna kind of start to draw some of these things. Now we are going to draw a little bit and then we'll pause for our special guests. But let's get drawing. We wanna make sure we get through all of our bird today. So. I'm using a whiteboard and markers, but you can use any materials you have. If you have paper, pencils, pen, markers, colored pencil, crayons, whatever you have, you can use that to draw. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to use, or I'm going to start with the beak. Now I'm gonna be drawing my bird using a black marker and then I'll color it in later because we need to include all those beautiful colors we saw on the lorikeet. So we mentioned the beak. So that beak is gonna be the first part that I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna make a curve and then sort of a little wavy line like this. That's gonna be the top part of the beak. And then there's two parts, they kind of open and close. So then I'm gonna draw like a little U for the bottom. So that almost looks like a little nut. So that is gonna be the beak of my bird. That's sort of where we start. And then I'm gonna to start to draw the head. Now we, we mentioned that the head is kind of a curve. So I'm gonna draw a curve like this to be the head of my bird. And I think this is gonna be, I'm gonna move it down a little bit so you can see, a good stopping point. We've just started, but I'm gonna pause for a moment because our special guests are here. So I'm gonna invite them into our studio. So we have aviculturist Amanda here, and she's gonna to talk to you about the special friend that she brought with her. Oh, no. <laughs> hello, this is Evelyn and Evelyn, is a Swainson's lorikeet. She's disappearing a little bit into our background because a lot of her feathers are green and that actually really helps her to blend into her uh, surroundings. And those surroundings would be the rainforest. Um, so she lives in coastal rainforests of Australia or these birds would be found there. And so they have all these beautiful colors all over them, including the green you probably can't see. <laughs> so that uh, it actually does help them to blend in. So even though they look super colorful, when they're next to things like trees, they blend right in and they camouflage. Now you'll notice she's drinking out of a little syringe that's in my hand, but it's made to look like a flower. Now these birds would eat or drink the nectar out of flowers. That is what they eat. They are nectivores. And so right now she's getting a special um, powder that's mixed with water, but that powder has a whole bunch of protein and sugars, and it is actually shipped all the way over here from Australia so that uh, these animals are able to eat some of their favorite foods. Now, Evelyn is a very special bird. You'll notice she kind of keeps reaching all over the place randomly. She was born here, but she was born blind. And so she uh, doesn't live in lorikeet forests like the rest of the birds that we have in our lorikeet forest aviary. Uh, instead, she gets to come and meet you guys for these special programs so that uh, she still has a nice, full, exciting life. She just wouldn't be able to survive out there because as you can imagine, 
Uh, if she can't see where she's going, she definitely can't fly anywhere. Um, so we do trim her flight feathers so that it keeps her nice and safe. And she gets to hang out with her brother, Kyle, who is also born blind. Both of them are Swainson's lorikeet, so I think you guys were talking a little bit about the differences based on the color of their chest. And so she can, let's see if we can get a little closer. She can show you that her chest color is that nice kind of sunset color. So she's got some orange, she's got some yellow. She's got all sorts of little colors all over her. Look how cute she is. Now, believe it or not, even though she can't see new objects like this flower, we still had to train her to get used to them. And we had to train her to eat out of this little syringe. Now, luckily, to train her to eat is not that hard because it's automatically something that's exciting for her. It's reinforcing because she gets food out of it, one of her favorite things. Oh, she's looking all over. There we go. <laughs> now, the way she's able to eat the nectar out of the syringe is with her very special tongue. Uh, she has a tongue that has little bristles right on the end of it. And so it is just like a paintbrush. It's able to lap up all the different liquids that come right out of the flower syringe. But also, when people come to visit Lorikeet Forest and they feed the birds with a little cup, they lick those cups pretty much dry because of that tongue adaptation that they have. I think you guys were drawing their little beaks earlier. Now they use their beaks because they're their mouths and they use them to eat, of course, but they also will use them to protect themselves if they have to. And they can even use their beaks to dig. So their beaks do all sorts of different things. Uh, and they are one of their really good adaptations. They can use them to climb. They can use them to feel around their surroundings. <laughs> and, uh, and that is super helpful because they have wings instead of arms. You'll notice she also has these beautiful feet. Parrots have feet that are called zygodactyl feet. That's a really big word. Uh, it means they have two toes in front and two toes in back. And that is the other adaptation that helps them to move around. <laughs> now, I said that she was born here in Lorikeet Forest, and so she hatched from an egg. There's still more. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe the color. <laughs> so she was hatched here from an egg, and our lorikeets can lay eggs kind of all over the place. Usually people imagine nests, like hummingbirds have nests, but these guys will find uh, little crevices wherever they are. So sometimes they'll dig their nests into the ground. Sometimes they'll find a little hollowed out part of a tree and they'll put their nests in there. And they'll lay uh, usually about two eggs at a time. And within about a month, those eggs will hatch. And then they are beautiful little naked bird chicks. And then eventually they'll get their, their down feathers. Those are those fluffy feathers the kind of grayish fluffy feathers. And then within about three months, they look just like fully formed adult lorikeets. And it is actually impossible to tell the difference between the males and the females just by looking at them. So here at the aquarium, we do a blood test to find out whether or not they're male or female. And we usually do that when they're about three months old. She is loving her nectar today. Now, a lot of people see parrots like this and they think, well, don't they? <laughs> oh, there's some baby lorikeets. Now, we actually train them to eat with that spoon. So we start with syringe feeding them, kind of like this. And then we work towards having them eat from a spoon. And then we work towards having them uh, just eat from a cup so that they are able to eat from guests and compete with each other in the lorikeet forest. Currently, we have about 92 lorikeets inside our forest. Now you'll notice those two little chicks have a different chest color. Those are the red and black stripes. Those are called green-naped lorikeets. That's the majority of the lorikeets that we have here in Lorikeet Forest at the aquarium. She's nice and full now. <laughs> there you go. So you guys can get a better look at her, even though part of her is blending into the background. You can imagine that's what they do in the forest. <laughs> oh, 
All righty. Well, thank you guys for letting me share Evelyn with you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Evelyn and Amanda. That was great. So much fun to be able to see our Laura Keat in the studio. It was so much fun to be able to see a live Laura Keat. I know it may have been a little bit hard to see them because their back is all green, but that actually helps them blend into their surrounding. It's one of their adaptations. Now, I know Amanda mentioned that word adaptation since you talked about a couple of the adaptations of our Laura Keats. An adaptation is a kind of a fancy word, but what it means, it's a tool or something on an animal's body that helps it survive in its habitat. So that color pattern being green on their back and colorful on the front is actually an adaptation because that helps these birds survive in their habitat. So if you think about it, if the back, you can't see the background behind me because you see our studio, but it's actually a green background. It's a green screen. So if you think about a tree that's all green, if a bird is hiding in there and their back is sticking outward, what you see is just green and they blend in. And so that adaptation, that color pattern helps them stay protected. Now I see a lot of questions come in. I'm gonna work a little bit more on our drawing to make sure that we get through our whole body of our lorikeet and we'll take the questions as we go. But let's put up really quickly a picture of a lorikeet just so that we can see one before we go back to our drawing. Uh, oh, this is a great picture. So this is really cool. It shows us not only the green, but the color pattern. And we've got the beak and their eye and even those feet that Amanda was talking about with the two toes in front and two toes in back. All right, so take a kind of a mental picture of this and we're gonna go back to my document camera and we're gonna continue our drawing. So we've got our beak and we've got a head. Now, when I left here, I'm gonna draw kind of a straight line down and then I'm gonna work on the wing. So the wing is gonna be kind of a curve. So I'm gonna kind of make it go down like this and out. So that is gonna be one of their wings. And I'm gonna draw sort of a line that follows it kind of like that. So there is their wing, but we have to draw the rest of the body as well. I'm gonna move it down, you can see the head. So we're gonna kind of make where the neck area would be, kind of like a little diagonal line and then the belly. Now, Evelyn had eaten a lot and they have something called a crop. It's sort of around their chest area right here and it puffs up when it's full of food. So we can actually tell when our lorikeets are full of food while they're digesting it because their crop is full. It holds that food while they start to digest it. So we're gonna draw the belly and rest of the body of my lorikeet. There's that body. Now, we have to draw, there's some more things we have to draw. Uh, we wanna make sure it has its feet, right? Those feet are really important. Amanda talked about how those toes are an adaptation. So I'm gonna draw the feet. There's gonna be one little leg and another here. And I'm gonna draw those claws, but let's give our lorikeet a perch to stand on. So I'm gonna draw a line. It's gonna be kind of like a branch of a tree. Just like that. Oh, let's continue it out this way. Doesn't look like it's floating. All right, and then if you remember, Amanda said it has two toes in front and two toes in back. So I'm gonna draw the little claws in the front on this branch and connect it with little legs. And then we'll pretend there's a two on the back holding on. And this allows the birds to hold on to a perch. So on a tree or helps them walk on the ground and then move around. And then they've got a really long back tail feather. Feathers making their tail. It was a confusing sentence. But I'm gonna draw it back here, kind of hanging down. And sometimes it's really long on our birds. So I'm gonna draw just like that. Are we missing anything? I think we're missing a couple, at least one thing I noticed that we're missing on our bird, besides all the color and the feathers. I'm gonna give it an eye. A little eye like that. All right, I'm gonna have Carrie put up a picture of a lorikeet because what we're gonna focus on next are the colors of the lorikeet. So while we're looking at the colors, I'm gonna take a look at some of the questions that we got in so that we can answer the questions uh, and then we'll get into coloring our lorikeets. And there's, you can color our lorikeets any color you'd like. They are rainbow lorikeets, so they come in all different colors. Like we mentioned before, there are three types that we have here, but 
That's only three types of lorikeets, and there are many more. So you can color them any colors you'd like. So make some observations of these colors, and I'm going to take a look at our questions. Uh, Ms. Amador's class is joining us. Thanks so much for joining us again. It's lovely to hear from you. Uh, their question is, are, there, are two lorikeets ever identical? Interesting question. So Amanda did mention that lorikeets lay one or two eggs. So they are born at the same time, but they aren't really identical. Their feathers can be different. So even if we have two of these swains and lorikeets where they have this sort of sunset pattern, there are little variations in sort of the color pattern here, or even sometimes they have little different color feathers. Up here we have a couple who have little green feathers kind of tucked into all this blue. And so we don't usually see them identical, but that's an interesting question. And another question, are lorikeets and parrots related? Ooh, great question. So parrots, there's a lot of types of birds that fall under the category of parrot. So we might think of parrot as one type of bird, but it's sort of a big term that covers a lot of different animals, including our lorikeets. So that means our lorikeets are a type of parrot. Now, if you live here in Southern California, a lot of our guests who come say that they've seen birds like our lorikeets all around the area. I grew up in Southern Cal or in Manhattan Beach, and we have them there. In Huntington, I know that they have the green parrots. You hear them squawking and flying over, and their bodies are mostly green, and they are related to lorikeets as well because they're all in that parrot family. But these birds come from Australia, whereas those green parrots come from somewhere else. So they're all related. They're all types of parrots, but they have different adaptations. Like those green parrots, I don't believe have the same kind of tongue as our lorikeets. And so that's what makes them different. Joseph wants to know, do they talk? Well, they talk to each other. They don't pick up any words that we say. They've been around people long enough that if they were going to repeat words that we say, they would have done it already. But they are very vocal with each other. An observation we get a lot when people walk through our aviary is that they are loud, and they are loud. But what's interesting is if you listen, you can hear sort of different tones or different squawks or squeaks that they make. And so we know that they are talking to each other. They're communicating. They just don't speak English like we do. Uh, and Adriana says, what do they eat? Oh. Excellent question, Adriana. So I'm going to have Carrie go back to that picture of the babies because the babies and adults all eat the same thing. Now, I think Amanda, Amanda mentioned that these are nectivores. Now, what that means is they eat nectar. Now, you may have heard that word nectar before but may not really know what it is. So think about if you bite into a grape or even a mango and all that juice that comes out. Oh, here we go. All that juice is basically fruit juice or nectar coming out of that uh, piece of fruit. And that's what these birds eat. Now, the nectar we give them comes in powder form. We get it from Australia. We mix it with water, and it looks kind of like this soupy stuff here. And all the nutrients that they need to stay healthy is mixed into this. We'll also give them a smoothie. We'll blend up some banana and grapes, and they love to eat that. Like I mentioned before in that picture of our aviary, there are cranberries on that Christmas tree. And what they'll do is they'll bite into the cranberry and they'll kind of chew it up and get all the juices out of it. And then they'll spit out the pieces of the actual cranberry. And so that's what they like, the juice from the fruit. They also like to eat flowers. So when Amanda had Evelyn and she was eating off that uh, sort of model of a hibiscus flower, they'll also eat the flowers and they'll eat eucalyptus flowers as well. But everything they eat is basically in liquid form. Their intestines, so all their organs inside, aren't developed the same way other birds are. And so things like nuts and seeds, they can't process. Their stomach can't break it down. And so they don't eat anything solid like that. It's all liquid. All right. And Miss Amador wants to know, are lorikeets endangered? I'm going to send that out to the studio. Not to my knowledge. We don't think so. We think they have pretty healthy populations. Now, in different parts of Australia and New Guinea, where they also find them, you'll find more or less of different types of lorikeets. So the Swainsons, the Edwards, and the Green Nape don't all necessarily live in the same area. So you might go somewhere and see more of the Green Napes or more of the Edwards. But lorikeets in general are not endangered. Can't, and our last question before we get to coloring our lorikeet is, can you have a lorikeet as a pet? Oh, hold on. We are getting some more information about this endangered question. We want to make sure we give you the right information. So we are looking at different sources, and we're still doing a little bit of research, so we'll come back to the question if we find more. But it looks like that there may be some species of lorikeets. So 
like I said, we have three species here, but there are many species. Maybe someone can look up how many species there are. But it looks like there might be a number of those species who are more vulnerable or going towards endangered versus others. And what I was going to assume and what Carrie confirmed is a lot of the threats to lorikeets are habitat loss. So they have healthy numbers, these populations of these birds, but as we build more and take down rainforests, that is habitat loss and that can be a risk to these population numbers of our lorikeets. But in terms of, can you have a lorikeet as a pet? I believe yes. However, I always tell when guests ask us is their diet is really specific. So you can't just go to a bird a pet store or a bird store and buy their food. It's very specific. They also poop a lot. I don't know if you noticed or you saw when Evelyn was on here. She pooped maybe three times in the seven minutes she was on camera. And they're very loud. So they may not make the best pets. All right, friends, let's get back to our drawing so that we can color in our lorikeet. Now, I'm going to make an Edwards lorikeet. So that's the one that had yellow on their belly. Ooh, and Cynthia, just let me know, there are 53 species of lorikeets. So we only have three here, but there are 53. And so there might be a few of those species who are on the endangered species list. All right, I'm going to draw or color mine in um, as a Edwards lorikeet. And that means that its belly is going to be yellow. But let's start with their head. So their heads are blue. So most of the lorikeets, let me see, actually I'm gonna start with um, my black marker and I'm gonna kind of separate the different areas. So I'm gonna kind of make little waves here and going down. So this is where the colors are gonna be kind of separated. All right, just like that. And then I'm gonna draw some lines here to know that they have feathers. So just kind of waves and then straight lines down, just like that on that wing and then down here on their tail as well. Because it's not just one feather that makes up their wings, they have a lot of feathers. And those feathers are really important that helps the bird fly. It helps them camouflage or blend into their surroundings. And we see our birds cleaning their feathers all the time. They wanna make sure that every feather is in the right place and that they're all clean and making them look nice and spiffy with all their colors. All right, so I'm going to start by coloring in the head of my lorikeet. So most of our lorikeets, they do have, you will notice, that bright blue head. So I'm going to color all around the head. Doo -doo -doo. It's always fun to kind of sing when you're coloring. Make little sound effects. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so they have a blue head. And then we know because it was very hard to see Evelyn and that is because her back is all green and so it blended in with our green screen. I'm gonna color this whole back part of my lorikeet green. So starting from the top of their head up here and then all the way down their back. Now this type of camouflage, I mentioned that word camouflage. Camouflage is an adaptation. It's something that helps this animal blend into their surroundings. But sometimes we think of camouflage as an animal being all one color to blend in, but there's different types of camouflage. And this specific type that the lorikeet has is called counter shading. And what that means is an animal is one color on one side and another color on the other. So green on one side, colorful on the other. We see it in lots of sharks and fish and rays and other birds where they're dark on one side, light on the bottom, often uh, sort of gray or black or brown on top and white on the bottom. But that is counter shading, being dark on one side and light on the other. And that protects the animal from multiple angles. So from for a, an animal like a shark, it's from above and below. For a lorikeet, it's from the front and the back. Because if they're in a tree that's got all these bright, colorful uh, flowers in it, like hibiscus flowers, their belly and all the colors on their body could blend in. And then the back of them will blend in with the tree itself, with all the leaves. So they're protected from multiple angles. All right, so I've got all this green. And then the Edwards lorikeet has a little bit of yellow, kind of a stripe along its head. And then all the way down. You know, I'm gonna have, while I finish coloring, I'm gonna have Carrie put up that picture of our three lorikeets. And that way, if you're thinking of what colors to make yours, you can take a look and see what these three lorikeets look like. So like I mentioned, I'm drawing this Edwards over here. Oh, I see that we're almost out of time. But you can draw any of these lorikeets here. So I'm gonna quickly color in the rest of my lorikeet. 
as we're finishing up. So I'm doing the belly yellow, all yellow to make it that Edwards. And then the lower half of its belly is going to be green. And then I have one more thing I want to make sure that I don't forget to color, and that is their beak. So take a look at their beak. What color do you see on their beak? It's kind of reddish orange. It's pretty bright. So I'm going to go ahead and color in my lorikeet beak really quick. All right. And now I'm going to come and show you what my lorikeet looks like. Nope. I'm going to keep it on the document camera. We've done this enough to know that our green blends in. All right, ta-da! <laughs> Here is my lorikeet. This is my Edwards lorikeet with its orange beak and yellow belly and blue head and green back. Now I'm gonna have Carrie put up our text number. So if you wanna share your drawing with us, just like I was sharing with you, we would love to see all of your drawings. And we are so glad that you joined us for this special draw with us. Um, we do ask if you are a uh, school watching, uh, teachers, if you can send us the number of students you have watching, we just like to keep records, uh, and that's super helpful for us. And if you're looking for more programming, we have another program coming up at 10. It's going to be a Spanish program with Cynthia, and we are going to learn all about habitat. So we're going to explore some different habitats. Uh, so we hope you join us then. Uh, if not, have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you again next time. Bye, everyone.